Um, did you play through an illness there tonight? You sound like a little bit croaky. Uh, look, I have look, you play, as, as players, I don't think you ever go out there 100% fit, but yeah, look, felt a little bit croaky this morning or whatever, but nah, I'm grand, you know, it's, uh, it's not the first time that's happened. And yeah, look, we, we cracked on and we got the point and that's all that matters. There's a couple of moments with the when the referee got involved and the players <laughs> came together and you particularly looked like you weren't going to back down with the Swiss players. Were you kind of like intent on laying down the marker to them there? Ah, oh, yeah, look, sometimes, you know, they get in around the referee and try to referee the game at times. And, you know, it's important to have a player in there that, that, that makes sure, you know, we're not just going to, you know, let them try and dictate how, how the ref uh, manages the game. So it's all tactics and all part of the game. You had a good relationship there with, Scott, uh, with sorry, Callum Robinson now on that right-hand side this evening. Yeah, look, I uh, played, uh, played with him last time we were in as well and obviously he's doing great at the minute at the club level and, you know, I just keep keep taking over and keep trying to do what I can and, uh, you know, it could have been better times tonight but overall I felt OK and, um, as I said, a point is a good result. How important is it for David McGoldry to get his first international goal as well? Did you speak to him afterwards? Yeah, delighted for him, absolutely delighted for him. He, he works so hard for the team, as you can see tonight and uh, in training, uh, anytime we meet up, he's one of the best players uh, every day and we know he's got that quality and, and that goal there will uh, will do him the world of good and uh, um, as I said he's a great lad so we're all delighted for him. Seamus Coleman's flying it isn't he like it's, there's been such an amount of conversation even over the last year about uh, Matt Doherty and whether yeah. he could get his way into the team and all that but he's flying it now in a way that that question is beginning to dissipate ev with every game. I never felt that I always felt that Matt would, would push him but I never felt that Seamus would lose his place to Matt just be I think Seamus is a better right back than Matt and if we're going to play 4-4-2 then that's that's where if we change it like we did yesterday to a, a 3-5-2 then then that's when you, your argument's coming for Matt playing as a wing back because that's what he plays for his club and Seamus would probably naturally go back into the centre the way Stevens did yesterday you'd see Stevens for the forward and Seamus would be the third centre back um, but yeah no you, you just got to his attitude, the way he works, his level of commitment to his role and how he's played, and he took a lot of quiz in that early last season for Everton. He was getting a lot of stick, and there's questions of him going. Everton signed the fullback this year, who's probably going to come in and push him, but he started yeah. off the season really brightly, looks strong, looks fit, has really got over those injuries he's had, and it, he's a player we need to perform for us. We need him on the pitch. He's a he's our captain and he's a leader, and he does a he's a, does it by example week in week out. Yeah, there's, uh, the back four is obviously pretty, uh, has been pretty uh, solid right throughout the, under Mick McCarthy so far, I saw John Fallon in the examiner this morning saying that nine players have started all five qualifiers, including that back four. Obviously that will change the next game with yeah. Stevens going out, but I know the shape was something that you wanted to talk to, so we start out with that 4-5-1 uh, with Coleman, Duffy, Kyo and Stevens across the back. So just explain to us then, 20 minutes before <coughs> half time, we tweak it up. So yeah, about 20 minutes before half time. Mick all of a sudden changed it, so Duffy and Kyo changed. Stevens came in as the left side centre back. Uh, yeah, Stevens came in as the left side centre back. McLean went to left wing back, and Seamus was right wing back. So we ended up having a three-five-two, and Robinson kind of came in behind McGoldrick, which was encouraging to see that Mick all of a sudden just decided, listen, we're probably not, we're not dealing with them as well as we should be, and then he just went toe to toe with them. He, he changed our shape to basically match theirs, and it worked for spells and we caused them a few problems we, we had a couple of chances with McGoldrick and then towards the end of the game we reverted back to what we started out with but to see Mick evolving and not just be this one dimensional manager and just a 4-4-2 which is what he would have been known for to look at a game analyse as it's going change the shape throughout, throughout the, the as it's going and for the players to straight away take it on and take it on board and it shows that they must be working on stuff like that and then the second half when we were chasing the game he reverted to a 4-4-2 to get the two strikers further up the pitch and get McGoldrick into the box which is where he ended up scoring the header from so they're encouraging signs that we have a manager that's capable of assessing the game realising it's working it's not working and then change it in an instant and then he has to, he's obviously working hard enough with the players for them to know that this could happen at some point it's not just off the cuff we're going to try this and if it works you can tell it's probably been worked on so and, and obviously it wasn't working to the level that he thought actually mm. because in the second half then we revert back to yeah, where yeah. we were so is that just a case of like it was working alright or maybe it got Switzerland working or yeah. guessing in a way that they hadn't done before now we'll just go back to where we were yeah. or like what's your yeah I could, I could I think he I think he possibly did it with the just to just to get toe to toe him because they were causing us problems. But then, when it happened, the two centre backs then start coming out the ball slightly more, which I'm not too sure. I think that's probably why he initially did it because he wanted to have the two up against him, but it didn't work. So then when he went back to the 
to the to the four five one. It still didn't stop the centre backs, but it was probably something that the lads were more comfortable with. It's just nice to see us changing our shape and not be not be rigid and be able to adapt to scenarios and if changes. Like Switzerland were very much that was their formation and they stuck to it and they play it very well and they keep the ball very well. We we just need. It was nice just to see us change. If everybody's fit and Mick McCarthy wants to proceed with that change in formation for the next game, who are you starting? Because John Egan can play in that system and Matt Doherty can play in that system quite well. Well, you would. Okay, both of those players played at club level. Mm. Egan plays the central role for Sheffield United, but I spoke about it on the show before. Sheffield United played very differently to most of the teams with the two other centre backs bombing forward like full backs. So that's not what John would be used to. If we were doing it, we would be having it as a three, and a lot of the time it's going to be a five. You, the two full backs would be back in, so you're creating a five at the back to stop any. So you're not you're not just having three. You're creating a situation where you're overloading the back so that we have more numbers in there to deal with a threat. So it can be a very defensive shape at times if you want it to be. So you would think Mick's idea would be Seamus in. Stevens on the left, which is his natural position, a left wing back, and then Matt on the right. But that's only if Matt's on the pitch. If Matt's not on the pitch, you can't do that. Yeah, sure. If so, if you're going to start again like that, that's one thing. But if Matt's not on the pitch, then it's going to have to be Stevens coming in and Seamus going high, or Seamus coming in and Stevens going high. But James McLean makes for the more natural left sided full back. He has that. He has that. I suppose level of responsibility where he tracks back and he does so. He naturally has a wing back in him, sort of. It almost feels like that is his best position. Yeah, it would be his best position, yeah. Easily, that would be James McLean's best position. Because going forward and attacking threat, he's very one-dimensional. He gets the ball over his feet and he puts crosses in. That's what he wants to do. And if you're playing against him, you know he's going to want to go down the outside and cross it. As a wing back, you're running into it. You're like Matt Doherty, you run on space. You don't really have to take players on as much. You're, you're, you're coming later onto the ball and you're just running forward. And if you have that willingness to run and you can make clever runs and run inside sometimes, then you'll find yourself in more space and time in the ball, which would, which would benefit James, I think. Yeah. Uh, so much made as well about the experience of the, of the team or the amount of football, I suppose, that a lot of them have played. And it really, like going through last night, looking at that starting eleven, like so many of them have been playing every game for their club at league level and uh, they're the type of players then to get rested for the for the EFL Cup. But it's really in that midfield area when you break it down with Horan. Started one of Villa's uh, four Premier League games. He had uh, 80 minutes there and 20 minutes off the bench in another one and played 90 minutes in the EFL Cup against Crew. You've Whelan, who's obviously a late comer to Hearts and has uh, started two games there. And you've Hendrick, who's got four minutes of Premier League uh, for the season uh, off the bench against Wolves and 90 minutes in the EFL Cup against Sunderland last week. So with that in mind, how concerned, I suppose, are you about looking at that midfield last night and how overrun we were at times? You mentioned yourself a bit earlier, how cut, how easily they cut through us at times. Yeah, it is a problem area for me because if those players are not going to get game time and he's talked about it so much that like Shane Long's not in the squad because he wasn't getting game time, he wants players that are playing week in, week out, but they're the three he's going to start, I think, regardless of whether they're playing or not because I think they feel his, they're his best option, especially if we're playing against a, a better team We'll, we'll probably revert back to not having a three midfield when we play against Leicester opposition like we did against Gibraltar but when we're playing against a good side he wants to have the whole midfield player and the two beside him and it, it is a concern because if they're not getting game time they're not playing for clubs Glenn will play you would think Glenn will play so he's going to get more game time he's obviously just started later than we would have expected so he, you would think he's going to play week in week out for Hearts it's, it's Conor Hurran and Jeff that are going to be limits for games home this season Connor's going to have to work hard to find them, to get a place in the Aston Villa team he's warranted it he did really well from last year and the manager will give him chances Jeff on the other hand is going to have to fight extremely hard to get into the Burnley side because he's been in and out at times and I don't think he's performed at a level that's been consistent in what Deutsch wants from him so that, it, it's difficult and the, the longer this goes on and the better teams we play against their midfield are extremely strong. They mm. keep the ball so well. Denmark and Switzerland, they're so accomplished in there and they, they find passes. They're driving forward with the ball and if, if we don't have the lads in there that are, are playing every week and are as, as physically fit as what you can be, then it, it could be an issue for us. You mentioned Mick's adaptability earlier on, but how can he stand over that midfield given how overrun they were last night in terms of his yeah. team selection if he is going to stick with it down the track? Well, that's a, in one sense, he's going, right, you're only playing if you're playing for your club and then the midfield tree is picking itself. Mm. Now, we all, everybody would have put them trees down as playing. No one would have picked anybody else because you know that's who Mick prefers. So he, he, that, that's his decision. He's standing by it. 
who else do we play in there? <laughs> that, that's the question. James McCarthy, he's not playing. And he's, well, it's, he, Roy, I know Roy very well. Roy likes to play the same team every week. So if James gets into the team and does well, he'll stay in it and he'll play every week. He needs to get himself into that team. Mm -hmm. And that's, what, that's going to be the hard part for him with all the injuries he's had. And obviously he's moved now to get game time. If he can play, that would be a benefit. That would be huge for us. Who else in there is playing? <laughs> I, I don't know who else you pick. Brown. Uh, uh, and, um, it's, it's, yeah. it's a difficult one. I, I'm not too sure who else you pick. And then, but the experience that those have had, that should probably see them through the games mm. in a sense of they may not be playing as much, but they've done it before, so they understand the roles. And they, they, that's why Mick feels comfortable in playing them, even though they're not playing. But it is a predicament, and it's, a, it's something that, that he, Mick can't fix. He can't go and play them for the clubs. Mm. He can't go and make them play, so it's it's an issue that he's going to have to just deal with and assess them when they come in and train and see if he feels like they're at the level he need he thinks they're at to be able to play in these games. Yeah, all right. We're going to get some uh, reaction from after the game last night. Richard Kyo uh, coming up, and first Connor Harrahan with Stephen Doyle after the draw. Had a really good spell just before half time, and again when he came back out for the start of the second half, was that something Mick kind of said to you? Just going to keep doing what you were doing? Yeah, we just wanted to keep going and, and, and keep giving giving our all and, and, and see where we could kind of um, muster up. You know, um, obviously they went up one nil. Um, like I said, we showed a bit of character to come back and get a good drop. What do you think of that four two three one formation you played in tonight? Is that best suited to this Irish team? Uh, I'm not sure. Listen, that's up to the gaffer to the side. Um, we just set up the best way possible against the Swiss, Swiss side because, like I said, we knew they'd have a lot of possession. So, um, you know, we, maybe we needed that little bit more protection tonight. It seemed like the stadium got really deflated when Switzerland scored, but, you know, it seemed to really, obviously, it puts, puts a positive spin with getting that equaliser. Did that, do you think it really changed the mood in the dressing room with the players as well? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, coming back um, to grab that goal is going to give um, that little bit of buzz to everyone, you know, the fans, the dressing room, everyone. So, and um, you know we'll take it. Just them um, as well. Do you think Callum Robinson? I saw he could have set you up maybe for a shot outside yeah. the box. You, you got a little bit rally about that one. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> Listen, yeah, I like having a couple of shots from outside the box, but um, yeah, it wasn't to be tonight. But uh, we'll take the point anyway. Richard, did you expect them to play two men up front? They usually go with just the one. Yeah, no. Um, we thought they might have played. Um, obviously, like kind of three at the back with a diamond in midfield, and um, yeah, they kind of yeah, pushed pushed the pushed the seven up front and. Um, yeah, like I say, it's um, when you when you got two on the pitch. Obviously, you have got to be on 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 on, uh, on the ball. But um, yeah, like I said, there's gonna there's gonna be times when you're under pressure a lot. But um, I thought we defended our box really well. Me and me and, me and Dust, and um, you know, just not us, but the whole team. And um, yeah, like I say, I thought I thought it was a massive point. Isn't it? So when that when you see that's happening on the pitch, does Mick shout on instructions? Or yeah, you... yeah. He, 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 we changed it. We changed it a couple of times out there just to try and uh, get a foothold back in the game. And um, yeah, I think you've got to be willing to adapt. You've got a group that can adapt to different ways, and um, yeah, now we worked uh, we worked all through that in training all week. Um, so yeah, like you say, we uh, we tweaked a few thing, things, and um, yeah, we just wanted to try and get a bit more of a foothold in the game. And like you say, uh, I thought we counted them pretty well at times. And um, but yeah, like I said before, it's going to be um, when you play against a team with uh, with good quality. Like I say, you have to suffer, and um, I thought we suffered, but in the end, it was all worth it because you know we got the, we got the point. Jesus, those eyebrows are impressive, <laughs> aren't they? They're like each one like a football pitch. Um, Richard Kehoe <laughs> and uh, Duffy, obviously, the centre back partnership has become like a real mainstay of that team, like the almost the heartbeat of the team in, in a lot of ways. Like he's a guy who's obviously thirty three. You're probably looking at knocking another 12, 18 months out of him, and you assume then that maybe John Egan is like one of these young pups that's coming in that's going to displace him. Well, what's great is John's playing. He's playing for his club. They're in the Premiership. He's getting some great experience. Uh, Richard obviously can't go on forever but he's still playing week in week out for Derby he's performing at a high level Derby are a team they're going to push for promotion again this season so and he's done that for countless years so for him he, he's just going to keep going I don't think he'll stop until he has to really but it's nice to know that we have a reserve there that is playing week out and that can step in to, and, and take up the mantle and there's, there's someone in the in the background ready to come in because it's 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 always a worry when you have players that are getting towards the end of their career but you don't see anybody else that can fill that void but we do have that at the moment which is nice. Yeah. Is this just, in an overall sense, is this just us now? Is this the personality of our team that we, like against, and I, uh, Switzerland are obviously a decent team, like against the better teams that it's just a case of, like Owen was saying earlier on about the rope it up aspect of we'll invite you on and we'll accept that you're going to overrun us for large per large parts of the game. We'll need to ride our luck a bit. We'll need some of those last gasp challenges and we'll try and catch you on the break later on. Do we just have to accept that that's 
kind of the personality of this team now? I think probably from watching as a spectator or as a pundit, we kind of have to accept it. As a player or mix your manager, you don't want to accept that. You want to think that you can go into a game and you have a realistic chance of winning and that you're going out there confidently feeling like you can beat this team. I don't think any manager or, or like I said, Mick definitely wouldn't be sending his team out there to, to go for a draw. He'd be saying, listen, you're going to go and you're going to try and beat these and we're going to try and press them high up the pitch. It's just well, what we have at our disposal at the moment and the way we are, we've improved and it's been drastic in comparison to the last campaign just for the sense of the good vibes around the place, the atmosphere, everybody seems to be a lot happier with the way things are. But when it comes to these big teams, and at the moment Switzerland and Denmark are, are, are very good sides, but they're better teams in the world than these. So when you get, if you do get onto tournaments and you come against even better opposition, and like Switzerland have Shakiri, excellent player, Xhaka, excellent player, Denmark have Eriksen, top, top player, but you've come, going to come against teams that have ex really, really good finishers, people that will score goals, and we can't give up the chances we've given, even though defensively we've looked solid and we've been good, and Randolph always comes up with a good save or two. We, when, we, when teams play intricate football around us, it's usually a last-ditch tackle, and we, we, we need to try and I know, prevent the teams getting into those positions. Like last night, it was the centre-back playing three or four one-twos and, and puts the ball into the goal. You, know, you don't see that that often. And that we can't allow that to happen. Mm. I noticed last night when we were, you were in the last time we were chatting about Robbie Keane and his, yeah. how active he was in um, training sessions. He was involved in the warm up last night in the yeah. bit of rondo, yeah. showing off a bit of skills. Yeah. I'm still thinking, get the hell out of there. Like, <laughs> just let the players at it. Yeah, uh, we had this discussion. It was about Lampard, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, Lampard, and you were talking Lampard about Glenn Hoddle. Yeah. And Glenn Hoddle joining in. And, like, again, Robbie's just at the game. And it's, it's different for him because he's not the manager. Mm. So, as the assistant, I think you're you have a bit more freedom to do that, to join in and have a bit of banter and you're the one, you're the link between the players and the manager. Mm -hmm. The manager, he has to have a relationship with you but he doesn't have to have a real close relationship with you. He just has to distance himself slightly whereas Robbie's the intermediate, he's the one that brings them together and he can join in and have that big cohesion and still feel like he's one of the lads to an extent even though he still has to give them instruction. So a little bit less from Robbie's point of view because he's the assistant. If he was the manager, you'd be saying, no, yeah. get out of there and don't do it. But being the assistant, you kind of feel you can get, get away, away with it a bit more. He's yeah. better touch than Mick as well. Yeah, and probably yeah. with a lot of players there. He's playing as Parco Brin was in touch on Facebook to say, Johnny Five was a sound skin on our conversation about sound robots earlier today. Uh -huh. <laughs> bad. Short circuit. Short circuit, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, we have plenty more to come on the football a little bit later on. And as a reminder as well that from midday today, right across Off the Ball Sports uh, Radio and on offtheball.com and on our YouTube channel, we're going to be broadcasting the full three hours uh, from our sold out Cadbury Roadshow at the Borgash Energy Theatre on Wednesday night with Roy Keane and Gary Neville. We're going to have a, a look, a little look at some of it now.